Get my hair done at the girl in the building when I lived in Brooklyn. I used to just watch her through here. So I could do that. <laughs> yeah. And then I started doing under braids. And then it was open after that. It was like everybody in the building. Can you do my hair? Can you do my hair? So you stole all her customers? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> but the young girls, I did their hair. Oh, okay, so like, she had her people and then everybody younger around your age was coming in. Yeah. And then she moved. Mm -hmm. She had moved away. What do you think the hardest part about doing it? What is like the most annoying thing for a stylist? Um, when you, when you know what you're doing, because you've been doing it. And then somebody come. I hate for somebody to be nitpicking when you're doing it. Because I'll show you my work, so. Yeah. yeah like, you like, have a client that wants it to be so perfect, but their hair before you is not perfect. Or well, they don't have no hair. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like, you you can't it. come with something that, oh, I want my hair like this. Uh, celebrities get their hair done every day, boo. Uh, like, what are you saying? Yeah. Like, the, there's a lot of misconceptions with being a stylist, and some clients just feel like they see something they online have to and it. they can get it. Like, you, the quality of the hair, the quality of the products, your texture, your hair, how you take care of your hair. It's like, different. it's so different. So, what you see online, you send me a picture. And you don't even have the same hair, or you don't you don't want oil, you don't want grease, you, you don't, don't want gel, you don't want gel, you don't want, want the like, blow dry, you don't want heat. But something. it's like, what are you talking about? How am I gonna achieve this style? So yeah, I can relate to that. It's just like they don't really know. They see something, they want it, and they don't know what it takes to to get there. You know, at all. Yeah. That's the same thing that sometimes people just wake up and say, oh, I, I'm just gonna be rich, like. A wish. Yeah, everybody wishes wish. that, but it, it takes a lot of work to do anything. Anything that you're trying to, you know, participate in. If you want to throw a fundraiser, it takes time. You got to figure out what you're going to do. So no matter what, what it, it is, is. It, it takes time. I've been doing it since seven. So somebody who just gets on the scene, you might learn quickly in one area. But if you braiding, twisting, dreading, weaving, doing everything, that takes time. You don't just learn that in a month and want to go viral. Like, yeah. you know, social media really makes a lot of a big difference. Like, you're looking online, you see these people looking a certain way, you know, it makes everybody go crazy. But I like how some people now, they master what they like to do instead of doing everything. Oh, okay. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Specialty. Like the yeah. special ponytail or the special. Yeah. But you know what? You do everything, so don't you feel like sometimes that it's boring? Like you, everybody only comes to you for a ponytail. I get it. I get it. When you right. are special in one thing, you're lit for that. Yeah. But I think as a stylist, like as creativity for me, nothing against people that do it. I just feel like 
I'm gonna get bored if I always do the same thing all the time. So I like when I do a wedding. That's a whole different yeah. vibe than when I have to do fashion week or yeah. if I'm doing, you know, let's say you're gonna do celebrity hair or something like that. Like every every situation is different. So I feel like if I only do this, I might not be able to travel. You know, if I have a salon, because a lot of people say, oh, why don't you have a salon? And I'm but like, they don't hey. know. It takes a lot of work. Yeah, it takes a lot of work. And, if, you know, some salon owners, they're going to get their money. They know their money's coming, and that's great, and it's wonderful. But I like to travel. So as a traveling stylist, so I don't know where I'm going to end up. Somebody might call. Like, I have a client today. They live in Puerto Rico. So I was like, oh, I was joking with him. Like, okay, maybe we'll fly out to Puerto Rico to do this. Yeah. And we're <laughs> like, yeah, come. Cool. Right. So you never know. But if I have a salon, I might not have, you know, I don't know if I, what kind of staff I'm going to have. But if I'm the only one in there, if I have a suite and it's just me, and if I close down, that's my money's cut off. So that was always my fear of having, a you know, salon. a right. salon that's like, I got to pay. If I don't own the building, I got to pay the rent for it. And then always make sure my clients are coming in because it's ups and downs, but like, yeah, because even if you ain't got nobody working in there right now, I gotta make sure that I pay. You know, if I don't have no clients coming in, people don't know me. You know, you gotta get them to trust you, see your work, and even when they see it, even if you do perfect, you know, some people just can't be happy with you. Did. You lace them, and it's still like. But, but you could have did yeah. no. Mm -mm. Yeah, that's, that's, that's frustrating. That's frustrating for a stylist for sure. Definitely And it's like you gotta keep up because some people, like you said, they specialize in one thing and they're so nice. You're like, damn. But when am I gonna have time to do this if all my clients are asking for braids? Like I want to step out and do ponytails, but that's what they braids. want. Yeah. And, and it's also a trend thing too. Like right now it's braids or like right now what they got going on. Right now they just everybody want a ball or everybody want to live. So it's it's hard to keep up with that. Especially if you live an everyday life, you're not in like the limelight and your right. own, your regular clients don't really want styles like that, so it's difficult. And then you never know when you're gonna get that chance, like you get a call to be somewhere but you gotta be in LA. Like how am I gonna get to LA right now? Like is that how am I gonna book that? You know, so I'm sure every stylist has a story about things they wanted to do and where they ended up and how they got there. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. What about crazy clients? Like something about them you don't want to let them go, but then they just get on your nerves so much. Like I have some clients, right? They will text me for weeks about something. Of all the hairstyle. I want this, I want that. The I want day to color it, cut it, and they get nothing that has to do with what they have to do. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm like, yo, you texted me for two weeks straight, and now you got twists, and you asked me die, I'm going to die. You know, so people don't understand what they're saying. And they would not communicate and say, I don't want that no more. And the products, we have to use so much stuff and people don't get it. Like they just think it falls out the sky. I gotta pay oh, for everything. Like, I gotta pay for hair. I gotta pay for gel. I gotta pay for combs. You gotta keep replacing your combs and sanitizing your combs. And my hair bag, I gotta keep fixing and putting more stuff in. If this person likes oil, this person likes grease, this person like, I gotta know every little thing. And it's like, y'all don't understand. This stuff is not free. Stylist price, a certain price. First of all, I'm on my on my feet the whole time. Some some stylists sit. I mean, I, I I'm a sitter and I'm a stand. It depends on who it is. If you're a family, I'm sitting. Yeah. But if you're a new client, I'm standing. So you picking a four or five dollar hairstyle. I'm standing the whole time, using my fingers, using my back, my neck, and I don't want to sit because I don't want to you know slow down. I want to keep the rhythm. You know, you're like, oh, I thought it was such and such price. Listen, everything's going up. Everything's going up. Your snacks went up, so don't your think snacks you're gonna, your food went up. Don't, up. Think, don't think that you're gonna um, just try to get this seven hundred dollar hairstyle for one twenty. That's not right. Because that one twenty, half of that is going to me getting new products to make sure that you get the style you want. So I'm not even pocketing all of this. But then some some stylists go too 
talking with the person. potential client because you can't think of prices and you need a price with your work you've been working 23 years so <laughs> add it up you know you've been working over that time you need to add it up you know but it's hard because people automatically feel like you know you know me so i'm getting so instant I, discount I should, no that's not how we go because mm -hmm. at the end of the day you got stuff to pay so what you know? and some people don't even think it's a real job like but just, not only that, especially for people that you've been doing it here for a long time, I feel like you should give me extra. I'm sorry. That's that's just how I feel. Yeah, tipping. People yeah, don't tip. No, they don't tip at all. Mm -hmm. You give them a price, it's and no they, tip. And they give you that price, you know? That happened with my little cousin I took her. She went to get a front to and I'm like, um, did you tip her? And she's like, oh no, I just gave it Zach. So my advice to stylists is, because you're servicing the product, add your tip. Add your tip in. Yep. Add your tip in beforehand so it's not a loss. If you're doing a style, a style cost normally 150, but you feel the tip for yourself should be 20, charge 170. So if they do tip additionally, then you win. You know, and there's nothing wrong with that. You have to nope. build in your prices to make sure you cover yourself. If you keep giving a discount or you let to everybody you know. to all your family, if, if all your family is your only client, don't give them a discount at all. If they know how to, because you know at the end of the day, I'm working from home or whatever, I'll come to your house, but if you go to the Hisma, you gotta pay way more than what I'm charging. So I feel like it's only fair that you at least tip. It's hard pricing. But you're thinking like, I want customers, so I want something appealing, but then I don't want you know to be so low that I don't make any money. But it is it's very difficult to price. Right. Especially like when you when like when I started the business, like I'm looking at all the money that I spent, money I lost, the free items that I gave away, the, the you know, the celebrity promo, the um, what did they call it? the swag bags all these different things that I've been a part of and it's great for exposure but sometimes you can't guarantee that the sales are going to come back so like let's say I do a style for somebody at a certain price say you charge 170 for the price whatever and really that style goes 450 once that person hears that price it's going to be hard for you to go back and say nah I need 350 because you already quoted them at that price, so you gotta be very mindful. As soon as you give them a number, once that number leaves your mouth, it's over. Because as soon as they tell somebody else, they hold that shit again. Yeah, yo, that's it. Oh, it's 170. Oh, yeah, she only charged me 170, girl. You better call her. Now, yeah, mind you, it could be the same way because you go to the grocery store and your stuff go up. So, why can't I change my price? Yeah, but it's I feel like you know, people just, you know, they'll hold you to something. Like, what I always say is that sometimes celebrities feel like they're not held to a certain level, but they really are. If I have they a business and I, and I sell something at a certain level, they be like, who are you? Who do you think you are? Until they see you do something to where they can say like, oh, okay, I see what you're doing. Like, this has to be their stamp of approval. Mm -hmm. But if it's a celebrity selling it, they're gonna buy it. They're gonna buy it. They're gonna buy it. Because either they're like infatuated with that person, they love them, they want to be like them, whatever the case is. And it's nothing against them. They built themselves to that space and I'm happy for them, you know, being in that limelight and they have, 
I call it um, star power, purchasing power. Like, you say one thing, oh, get off, click off my live, and go shop right now. I'm going to drop the price. That's a sales tactic. Maybe they're not doing the, the traditional marketing way. They're not on the way. They, they know how to get their money, and they're using their star power, their personality. And I hear that all the time. It's not that your products are not good. People don't know you. So when you think about people, you're like, oh, I know people. I know people in Brooklyn. I know people in Staten Island. I know people. But in real life, it's like there's millions of people. So millions of people do not know you. Right. So I didn't expect really to make all this money when only a couple thousand people know me and only a hundred of them are shopping with me. I'm grateful for everybody that shopped with me, but when you have millions of people shopping, that's a whole nother ball game, you know? So it all depends on what you're trying to do, but star power, that, that's real. And then I think it's scary. I'm scared of being famous. I don't ever want it fame. I just want money. <laughs> I want it to do great hair. I want to do great community service. And I want to be loved. I want my son to be straight. That's in my family. But right. to be famous is kind of scary. Like, I just like to go to the store with a bonnet on and be normal. No. They're going to be like, uh-uh. She's selling like, hair and doing hair. Look at her hair. Uh-huh. Like, and that's what I want to be ugly. <laughs> sometimes I want to just, just not do anything. Around. Just throw on a whack looking outfit run to the store run to the mall and and be normal so when you're in that limelight it changes everything sometimes it changes people i don't want any of that i just want to sell great items that work for the stylists that that are like me you want to have nice things and your clients are like oh where did you get that from oh that's nice you know things like that but fame to me is scary you come with a lot it comes with a lot of good things, but then yeah. you gotta work. But you gotta it. get the bad with the good. Yeah. You gotta take the bad it with gives the good. Me a headache. It really... Like even now, people say that I'm famous. I'm like, I'm not famous. Please don't say that. <laughs> Do not say that. They're like, you're gonna be overnight slow. I'm like, I don't know about that. <laughs> I'm like too shy. Like I'm when I'm around people, I know I'm not shy, of course. But in like regular life, people that I'm like. You know, it's like, mm, mm -hmm. no, thank you. I go sit down in the corner or whatever, but now that you gotta like talk and be in front of the camera, like, yeah. your life just, it really is like that. It just starts changing, but you see that people that know you, and it's like, I have the same number, I'm still the same person, but sometimes people feel like, like earlier today, I was doing here all day, but you know how like sometimes you just look at your phone real quick, read something, put it down. Mm -hmm. So they're like, oh, ooh, you ignoring people now? And I'm like, oh. But if I show you exactly what I'm doing right now, you'll see why I, I did that. But like, why would you even think that? All right. You only wrote me one thing. It wasn't like an emergency. They were like, it the wasn't nothing. Right. So I'm like, no, I'm doing it here. But you know, they're calculating the time they wrote. The time that you post cleared on Instagram. Everything. Like, I'm just like, I don't even do that. Like, I don't need to do that. I don't need to, like, read. And you, it, it, it would have to be something going on, like, for me to just do that. Like, not, oh, I just woke up and feel like just opening everybody and just closing it. No, I'm doing it here. But even when people can't see what you're doing, they think you're not doing anything wrong with it. That's one of the biggest things. Because you can't see what I'm doing, I'm instantly doing nothing. <laughs> like today, I had four clients on the note, but I didn't post nothing all day because I didn't have time. So you think I'm home just, just, just sitting there dreaming about my products? Somebody buy it? Like I'm working, you don't know what I'm doing. You're like, uh uh, look at you ignoring people. I have, I had two people today. One was getting a dive, one was getting an outlets. I had to swap them until my assistant came. And then she was checking her roots. Had to go up upstairs and wash her out. I'm still braiding. We ran out of hair. We had to wait for the mom to come bring more hair because she only wanted the skunk braids. Oh, in the front. In the front and didn't want it nowhere else. So we couldn't. I was trying to say, hey, do you want more purple? Do you want, no, no, I just want black. I just want black. I'm like, you gotta call your mom because we ran out of here. And we had like 10, we had 10 pounds. 
we had mad hair and we ran out of it because not list really takes a lot and um you know 